Hello everyone, my name is Meredith Hinley and this is a presentation of the second semester in the class of MSC Animation and VFX. My research question is how can a still artwork be translated into an animated work in order to evoke emotions to the audience? The outline. Before the presentation starts, I have created an outline which is separated into chapters the personal project and the space group project. In the personal project, I am going to speak about the concept, methods, the storyboard, introducing my characters, the main character, and the timetable. As for the space group project, I am going to speak about the concept, the storyboard, research and testing, photogrammetry, 2D assets, key light, and texturing. The concept. The concept so far was about the relationship between still artworks and animation, and how these two are related in order to evoke emotions. In the first semester, I based my theory on still artworks. Since creators in the animation industry started to create films, videos, and more, they use only the scripts and books as the main source of inspiration. Without declining the previous theory, I have continued with my research in Paul Ekman's theory about the six emotions in animation. Happiness, sadness, disgust, anger, fear and surprise are the six basic emotions that I have related into my story. Each one of them is represented by a character and these characters contribute to the main plot of my final video. The methods so far, the methods I have listed in the first semester are the following. Observation, experimentation with materials and processes, and last but not least, making of art. Now that the second semester is over, I am going to concentrate more on the third methodology and proceed to the making of the final video. The storyboard. The first storyboard was about a talking painting in which all the characters were coming into life by my experiences in Scotland. After a lot of consideration and thought, I decided to change the story and keep notes in the process. But only after I wrote down a proper script, I was able to come to a conclusion. Today, the story is about a young female creature design. Born in a painting as a sketch, she realizes what she is and she celebrates life with happiness. Her expression and her feelings are so strong that whatever she looks in the white empty paper, the emotion of her facial expression starts to be born same way as her. Each character represents one of the six emotions of Paul Ekman's theory and they are designed only after she has experienced them. After a domino of mood changes, the last creature that causes her fear leads to a psychological panic attack. In the end, she opens again her eyes, realizing she is once again alone in the paper and everything was just in her head. But when the camera zoom out, the audience will see that literally everything moved in the back of her head. The theme of the video is around sketches, creation and emotions. Emotions that we all feel and experience. The title of the video is How About a Panic Attack? Unfortunately, I was not able to complete the two last scenes of the storyboard because recently I changed my characters and no longer using assets that I had. Introducing my characters As I mentioned before, I have connected each character to one of the six emotions. The swans representing happiness and because we are talking about happiness, I decided to keep the color palette white. At the same time, I managed to complete my assets and key poses of the swans to create movement in my final video. The crows, on the contrary to the swans, are creatures that symbolize death. Designed in a way that represents sadness, I kept the color palette total black in order to make the contrast more noticeable between life and death, happiness and sadness. The next emotion in order of my storyboard is the emotion of disgust, represented by the pig. Pigs as animals in real life, they are living in a pretty much disgusting way. 
That is why I chose the pig to describe the emotion of disgust and kept the color palette close to the natural colors. Nevertheless, the pig has a lot of action in the storyline and that is why it has human elements. The snake character represents the emotion of anger. As well as the previous characters, the snake is a hostile creature and the color palette is based on the representative colors of anger. The main character the main character has not changed much, but I decided to make it half-body, since in my storyline the whole plot is around the facial expressions. Apart from a few testings, in 3D model I decided to keep in 2D. That is why I started to create key poses on the facial expressions of my main character. And because she's inspired of my face, I took a lot of photos of myself and I used them as references. Later on, I might use also video references in order to succeed at the movement. This was a very useful advice from James Baxter at the MOVE Festival. Apart from the existing expression, I took some extra photos to complete the needs of the storyboard. The timetable. So far, I have managed to work and finish my assets in Photoshop as well as the script and storyboard. By the beginning of the last semester, I will create my last character and his poses ready for the video. Also, I am about to correct the last two frames of my storyboard according to my script and for the rest of the month proceed in testing in After Effects. In June, I will do the rigging and start the editing of the final footage. Like June, July and August are the last months and I will do the animation and rendering. Space Group Project in the first attempt to find a concept, I did what I'm used to do better and be good as a graphic designer, creating a concept inspired by uniting ideas and elements from every person in the team. After I did my research and broke down the brief I was given, we came up with a story of a girl, lost in a city realness, that finds a poster to transfer her into time and space. After I created a couple mood boards, my position in the group was in pre-production and separation of 2D assets such as storyboard, graphic design, and photography. The storyboard In charge of the storyboard were me and my classmate Mia. At first, we decided to separate it in sketching and coloring, in order to keep significant styles in both. As I was doing the coloring during the process, I had a lot of changes in the storyboard and the coloring was no longer needed, so I did the final changes in the sketching like Mia's designing style. Research and testing As the group decided to do the filming in a real environment in Dundee, I took the initiation to go for a ride with my bike in Old Dundee, searching for the perfect street. During the ride, I was filming every street with my GoPro camera, so the next time we went out with the rest of the team, we knew exactly in which streets we will head to. At the same time, I managed to find an actual little girl volunteer for the lead character. After I took some testing photos of the girl, I turned to a lawyer, fellow student for help. After we conducted a formal form for the parents to sign, I managed to produce a scene testing. Unfortunately, during the virus, we could not use the little girl, so the form was unnecessary. Normally planned, the filming would be both in real environment and green screen, so later on we booked the green screen room and ran some tests. Most importantly, I learned how to use properly the lights and the equipment on the university. Photogrammetry for the fellow photographers, I must say that photogrammetry, not an easy thing. It has nothing to do with the photo shoot of the landscape as we know it. Apart from some technicalities in the light and camera settings, it takes a lot of patience. Since I was more familiar with cameras, I oversaw the photogrammetry, but since it was my first time doing it, I went at least four times at night in the alley to do so. After the help and corrections of my professor, Kieran Baxter, I managed to collect my photos and put them on Metashape software, with the help of a fellow student, Mikey. Along with the photogrammetry, I took the opportunity to photoshoot some real textures, 
as acids for the footage. 2D Acids Since my BA was in graphic design, I was in charge of creating the posters of the video. As I mentioned before, the transition from the real environment to the space was through a poster of NASA, and so, after the mood boards, I did some samples for the team. After I received corrections, I did the final poster in neon typography. The key light. The key light was an extremely new experience for me, and since no one from my team knew this procedure before, we all agreed to do one scene in Roto. Although I understand Nuke from the classes, I felt more confident to do it in After Effects. Apart from separating Carly from the green screen, I had to flip her horizontal and place her in another video footage, background of the alley. Texturing Since my work was done, or at least I thought so, during the changes of the coronavirus and the lack of time, I was told to do the texturing of the 3D model of the girl's spacesuit. I received from my classmate Michael Sloan a 3D model from the spacesuit and I did some color testing in Maya. With his help, I managed to create the UV maps in Maya and prepare them for Photoshop. After the UV parts were ready, I decided to push myself further and use a new software, Substance Painter. Since the goal and meaning was to use textures, I downloaded the trial and for a week I was watching tutorials. I became more comfortable with the software and in the end I enjoyed it. Close to the final, Michael Sloan helped me to transfer the Substance files to Maya and see how they apply on the model. After the company sent professor's notes, I preferred to do the changes in Photoshop on the UV maps directly, and then apply them in Maya on the final model. To conclude, for the normal maps, I made the mesh look like there was more sculpt work, but the surface is still flat. In the displacement map, dark black and white, it makes the textures to stick out. I learned that the whitest parts make it stand out, Black, on the other hand, makes it remain low. For the specular, light black and white, I did not really use it, but that is for making white glares when the light is hits the mesh. Works similar to displacement map. The wider it is, the brighter. Last but not least, I also had the opportunity to keep up and update the team blog on Tumblr. Apart from uploading photos and files of mine, I also kept notes and comments for the procedure we followed as a team. Now we have come to the end of the presentation. Before I go, I have attached below some of the references I used for this presentation. Thank you for watching my video!